you for the opportunity to speak on your behalf. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege. In the name of Jesus, God, we just thank you. Asking your God to have your way on tonight. Lord, have your way where my mouth move me out of the way. And let your spirit move in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. First, I want to give my honor to God and to because he is the head of my life. He is the love of my soul and the love of my life. And I thank you tonight. And give an honor to Bishop and, and to, uh, to Lady Harris so who's back in the absence. And I'm going to give honor to everybody because honor is due to everybody in the house. I ain't going to call them the titles. I don't give honor to everybody because everybody is somebody. Amen. Amen. Everybody is somebody. Amen. I just thank God for the opportunity tonight because uh, actually earlier in the week the Lord had said, you're going to speak. I just kind of chuckled. And I, 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 I kind of chuckled. So when I got it, I, 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 I knew, but I didn't. I, 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 yeah. But I said, Lord, I thank you. It's an honor. To come before God's people is an honor that God will to use me, and I thank God for that. Amen? Amen. Mark 11, 22 through 26, and we'll read it real quick. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he hath said, that he, which he said, shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And when ye stand praying, forgive. If ye have ought against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespass. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespass. Again, the title of the lesson is what to do with your mountain. Amen. What do I do with my mountain? First of all, a mountain is a large pile or quantity of something. <coughs> First, you have to identify the mountain. A mountain can be many things. A mountain can be your job. A mountain can be your little children. A mountain can be your church. The mountain can be your spouse. Mountain can be relationships. Mountain can be an addiction. And your mountain can be yourself. I said, hmm. But the Lord told us to have faith in God. Because without faith, it's impossible to please Him. And the only way you're going to move that mountain is you got to have faith to move the mountain. In this, Jesus had spoken to that fig tree because it was buried. He cursed it. He dried up. He spoke to it. He's telling us now, every mountain in your life, you have to have faith in God in order to move the mountain. He gave us the power. Those of us who have Christ in our lives, he gave us the power to speak to our mountain. Whatever the mountain is. And sometimes, we feel as though we're so hot that we say, God, I need you to move it. No, he told you, speak to that mountain. He told me to speak to it. This position right where I'm standing, Pastor, used to be a mountain for me. This was one of my mountains. My soul says yes. But my flesh said, no, you can't do that. I've been home to eat. My stomach was sick as a dog. I kept thinking about that be up here. I said, oh, Jesus, you got to help me. Mountain. But I said, God, for you all live and for you all die. Yeah. I promised him that whatever you tell me to do, I'll do. And wherever you tell me to go, I'll go. Whatever you tell me to say, I'll say. I made a promise to him. Because I owe him. When he hung on the cross for me, that was his mountain. But he hung there. He never said a mumbling word. When they spit on him. Yeah. 
out of my mind. I'm trying to get out of this, Sister Angie. But if we had faith to believe God, why is it that we believe God for some things and some things we don't believe God for? I believe God for my job, but I don't believe Him for a raise. I believe God for a husband, but I don't believe God for a sanctified husband. I believe God for a wife. I don't believe God for no sanctified wife. What is your mountain? What is your mountain? Is your mountain your children? God help me before I kill Is that your mountain? Is your mountain your relationship? It doesn't have to be more than broken husband and wife. Friendships. Yeah. Is that your mountain? It's about telling you to get rid of the mountain. But I'm going to hold on to that one, God. I don't want that mountain to leave. God said, well, that mountain is stifling your spiritual life. Speak to it and get rid of it. But I don't want to, not that one. And then he jumped down to forgiving you. So when I read it, I said, okay, the only way, and reading into the lesson in the commentary, the only way God will allow us the power to speak to the mountain is we got to be in line with his word. I said, okay, God, I ain't going to tell you how to write your word because you already got it wrong. But I said, Lord, when you put the scripture on that to forgive, look like I didn't forgive before I had to let mountain move. I said, Jesus. But he put it in there like he wanted to. If I don't forgive, he won't forgive me. And he didn't say what it was. He said, look at it. Because sometimes when he told me, he said, y'all categorize sin, but I touch it. Because you know, you, you, know, you didn't speak to me. But I will give you. You stepped on my toe. But he said to me some years ago, I was down praying, Pastor. And I was praying for Debbie. But I was praying for Debbie, but I had some unforgiveness in Debbie's heart. For, at that time, a husband. For all of y'all who got these people, y'all don't forgive. I'm going to look up there. He said to me, that I was hollering and crying, but he did this and he did that and he did this and he, he, the Lord said to me, if you don't forgive me on the highway, that's what he said, I won't forgive you. Baby, when he said that, he showed me all of my life in a real of a thing. The Lord showed me everything I had done. And when he got through with me, I was laying prostrate on the floor. Right. He said, when you did, and he called it out, and I ain't called it out, and put it in the city. If you want to go get it, go get it. Right. He said, but when you did it, I forgave you. Right. Even though I knew he was going to go back and do it again. He said, I still forgave and if you don't forgive him, I won't forgive you. And that taught me. So I said, Pastor, I said, God, I will forgive him. But I need you to give me a heart of forgiveness. We cannot forgive him outside of God. Sometimes we try to do it on our own. And we end up hating people worse than we did. But if you go down on your knees and say, God, I need you. To give me a heart of forgiveness. God will give us a heart of forgiveness. All God will want to do to be clean with him. 
secret thing you do. I hear everything you think. There's nothing hid from God. And if we didn't need to forgive, he would have never put it in there. But if we don't forgive, God will not forgive us. If there is somebody in your life, and I'm talking to me too, that I or you need to forgive. And sometimes we want to do it the coward way. Sometimes I just want to say, God, I forgive them. But God has told you to go to him. He wants you to say what you need, what you forgive me for what I did. But because I don't like you, I'm just going to say I will forgive you. I can't get nothing from God not doing it his way. Is his way or the highway? That's what we tell the people we mess with. It's my way or the highway. When it's God's way or the highway. He ain't going to change for me and he's not going to change for you. And as I close, let's get rid of our mountains. Speak to our mountains. Speak to the mountain in your life. Those of us who have the power of God, he ain't said don't send us to your mountain. Don't send us to repent. That's a mountain in itself. Sin. But he told the saints in his word, Speak to your mountain. There is a condition for that mountain to move. And that's a clean heart. Speak to it. Forgive. Forgive. God will not forgive us if we don't forgive. It'll be a terrible thing to lay down and die and think you have forgiven. Stand before God. And you say, depart from me because you can forgive. And remember, we categorize sin. But God judges. Bye. 
unforgiveness. So when church dancing, faithful, but did not forgive because when I heard his name, it's something to me. Any of you over here that hear a name and somebody that offended you and makes you kind of uptight, it's because you have not forgiven them. So one day I went over to Sister Markson, which was the oldest daughter, and he was staying with them. So I walked into the house. And he said, uh, my nickname is Doe. He said, Doe, I, 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 I said, I don't want to hear nothing you got to say. He said, listen. He said, this is no foolish. He said, I want to ask you to forgive me. Because she was a good woman. But you all know what? After that, I saw the man in a whole different light. I forgave him for 17 years. I held on to the anger and the bitterness that was in my spirit. I'm saying tonight, coming to church is good. But if you're holding unforgiveness in your heart, you're wondering why you are not free. God can't free you. Because you tied his hands by unforgiveness. But I forgave that man, and after that, I could talk with him and I could see him. Didn't feel nothing in me like that. It freed me. Unforgiveness is not for the other person, it's for you. It's for you. It's for you. So if you can't seem to get a breakthrough, regardless of whatever, whatever you, you do, say, God, what is it in me that I have not let go? Because sometimes you'll think, well, he did me wrong, so what? And, 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 but listen to this. We have did Jesus Christ wrong so many times, even since he saved us. We have disobeyed him. We have backslid, kept on coming to church until we got it together. We have said no ugly things, but he forgave us for everything we've done wrong. So when it comes down to us forgiving somebody else, we need to think about the things that God has forgiven us. Things he's forgiven you for, you won't dare tell nobody. He know about it, and he's forgiven you for that. So if there is someone here tonight that unforgiveness has got your progress, got your hands tied, tonight is the night because tomorrow is not promised. Amen. Amen. When I think about everything that God has forgiven me for and how I'll say I won't do it again, I won't make it again, down to the years I did it again and, and, and wouldn't, 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 you know, do what he said, the word was there, but my flesh wanted to have its own way. God forgave me. I said, God, how can I not forgive? Because I'm going to tell you something. You haven't made it to glory yet. You don't know what can happen tomorrow. And you might need the forgiveness of God, but you're holding something against somebody, and you think I'm going to forgive you. You're holding your own self in the hostage. He can't forgive you. Because he said in his word, unless you forgive your brother, neither will your heavenly father forgive you. So always keep it clear. So if you should sin, we have an applicant with the Father. And our, our, our slate is clean. We can go to him. And he won't say, well, you got to go back to your sister. And forgive her before I can forgive you. Now, this came tonight because somebody here needed to hear that. Don't think that it's, 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 it, it, they don't deserve me to forgive them for what they did to me. No, you're only holding yourself in hostage. don't know what you may do tomorrow. Amen. And you're going to ask God to forgive you. Now, you here tonight, you need, to, you need to make your way up to this altar and ask God to forgive you for holding what you're holding against somebody else. So God can lose you to be free in him. What are you going to do about your mountain? Because only I
that there is nobody that I know of that I'm holding anything against. If I felt like that I was, I would go to them before this night's service was over and ask them to forgive me because I want to be free. I want to go back with the Lord when he comes. And tonight is the night. Tomorrow is not promised. We did Jesus wrong, wrong, wrong. Say, well, Sister Clark, you don't know what they did to me. I don't know what I don't know what you did since she didn't say anything. And in wrong Christ, all he ever did was get you good. So remember, your time in your own hands to your blessings by not forgetting because of what was done to you. How can you say, well, I've forgiven, but if you don't care to be in their presence, if you don't care, if, if you speak their name and something happens in you when you get uncomfortable, it's because there's some unforgiveness for that. So I get down. I don't want to hear their name. And goodness knows I don't want to sit in the same room with them. Why? Simply because there's unforgiveness. And it's tied holding you and you keep saying God I want to go back with you when you come no you got to turn your brother loose you got to turn your sister loose before I can turn you loose Thank you. 
I want to say something to you. Sit down and just sit down. You know what the Holy Ghost is not through? He's not through. And I want to tell you, when I, I had a business partner that literally threw a crooked lawyer stole my business. We lost hundreds of thousands of dollars. We lost the business that we poured many years into my wife and I. Man was Baptist. I was a Holy Ghost, tongue talking, shouting, dancing, Pentecostal pastor. And when the man did what he did, and this is for somebody here. Somebody's had a serious offense. All I could think about doing is my wife had a heart attack, was put in the hospital. My family was put out of their, our home. We was living in a KOV camp. And I, I'm telling you, we went from in-ground pool and jacuzzi and maid service and money, okay? almost on the street because of this man. And Mother Clark, all I could think about doing, I was, got my pickup that was borrowed, got gasoline, now I'm talking Holy Ghost pastor. Don't think you're standing unless you fall. That's a word for somebody, kid. If God knows what's down the road, but I got that gasoline, and I was driving to his house, and I was going to burn it to the ground. Because I lost my home and my wife in the hospital, lost the business, our livelihood, our savings, everything gone. And all the years of hard work. And on the way, that's why we're climbing up the rough side of that mountain, I'm telling you. But on the way, Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for Jesus. And thank God if you can hear his voice, even in the midst of your purpose seen. And Jesus just said to me while I was almost at his house, and he said, how, just as loud and clear, how will you face me on the day of judgment? I'm trying to tell you, so you better have the fear of the Lord. Turned off went the orchard, took, took off running, the pickup running, and I took off running in the dirt. Fell on my face in the dirt, sobbing and crying and sobbing everywhere. Said, Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me. And then to make this testimony, I didn't want to face the man, but I asked the Lord to forgive me, and then he said, you got to go to him. I mean, I, I, I'm ready to burn this guy's house today. I was so angry. Holy Ghost time pocket preacher. And you know what the Lord did? Walked into a restaurant and guess who was sitting right there? That man.
asking you right now, Lord God, hallelujah, Father, to search our hearts on tonight, Lord God. We're asking you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, where we're holding things against someone and haven't forgiven, Lord God, or maybe don't even know how to forgive, Lord God, but we're asking you, God, because we know, Lord God, with man, it's impossible, but with you, all things are possible on tonight, Lord God. So we're asking you, God, if there is anyone or if we know someone that we have not forgiven and we just don't know how, Lord God, help us, Lord God. Help us to get to that place so that we can release the people that we need to forgive, Father. In Jesus' name, 